Hi everyone, it is Danielle Shaitan here again, licensed and board certified functional family nutritionist. Um, I am doing a Facebook Live today for maybe about 20 minutes or so, talking about how to strengthen your immunity naturally, specifically for moms, pregnant moms, postpartum moms, lactating mothers. Um, so if you have any questions, I hope that you will post them and I will try to work the computer effectively as I give you all of this exciting information. Um, so what will we talk about today? We are going to talk a little bit about gut health because it is so important to immunity. And if you didn't already know that, uh, we'll dive a little bit into why. And given that in pregnancy and postpartum, we do have some challenges with motility and our gut, this will be an important topic for us to discuss. Um, the next thing we'll talk about is uh, micronutrients and some specific micronutrients that will support your immune strength and um, and foods that you can start to incorporate now to boost your body's intake of these nutrients let's see and the last thing that we'll talk about is a couple of my favorite items I have them here with me that I keep in the kitchen and in the fridge um, so that I can make some immune boosting kind of concoctions on a regular basis so we'll talk about those and um, I'll show you kind of the ingredients that I use as well as I'll share a couple of my favorite supplements um, in case you are interested in taking a look at those hi Melissa so nice to see you. I am excited to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's start with the gut health. Okay, why is gut health so important? Well, um, let me first start with thinking about when you think about your immune system, th say if that you're thinking about that you are not feeling well or somebody in the family isn't feeling well is one of the first things people do is they they check the lymph nodes right are they swollen are the lymph nodes swollen so that is something called lymph tissue we call them the lymph nodes there are nodes throughout the body but this lymph tissue actually also lives in our gut it is um this is a space why we call it why we feel the lymph nodes and why they get swollen is that there are immune cells in there that really take the bacteria and pathogens in the body and cancerous cells even, and they take them to these areas to break them down and engulf them so they don't do any damage. So this lymph tissue actually lives throughout the body and there is a lot of it in the gut. It is called the gut associated uh, lymphoid tissue or also known as the GALT and it represents about 70 to 80 percent of the entire immune system which is why you hear that stat a lot 70 to 80 percent of your immune system lives in your digestive tract so keeping your digestive tract healthy is critical for immune strength and we'll talk a little bit about that and how you can do that today so the first thing what does healthy digestion look like and i know that my pregnant mamas might struggle when they hear this but we should definitely talk more if you are not experiencing what healthy digestion looks like so healthy digestion looks like one to three bowel movements a day and it should be if you look up the bristol stool chart it'll tell you um, it's essentially a chart that demonstrates the consistency of stool i'm sorry my life is about poop um, as a functional nutritionist i talk about poop a lot so um, check out that chart your stool should look like a three to a four on that chart basically it should be long brown logs there shouldn't be pebbles, it shouldn't be hard to go to the bathroom, it shouldn't be overly smelly. I mean, smelly is one thing, right? But it shouldn't be overly smelly um, and it should be easy. It shouldn't come with a lot, a lot of gas. So if you are not, <laughs> I know it's funny, my life is about poop. Um, so if you um, don't experience healthy digestion, then keep listening because we'll talk about how to help your body improve digestion. And if some of the 
the the strategies that I'll talk about aren't helping you, you should definitely get in touch with someone like myself or another functional nutritionist or functional doctor that you know to really work on your gut health because it will continue to compromise your immune strength. So in pregnancy, we um, tend to have constipation, right? And that means our body is not moving out toxins that it has absorbed in the gut fast enough. And then they can become reabsorbed, which can be another contributor to lower immune strength in pregnancy. So we want to make sure we're moving our bowels. And hopefully you're not moving your bowels with constant use of laxatives because that means there's an underlying root cause that we need to address to help move your bowels along. Um, so, you know, in a healthy gut, there are trillions of these microorganisms that live in your digestive tract, and we call that the gut flora. So your gut bacteria or your gut flora, they do a lot of important things for your body and particularly for your immune system. But one thing they do that's important to know is they support motility. So they help move food through your digestive tract. And they help maintain the health of that digestive tract. So we want to support those gut bacteria any way that we can. And the way that those gut bacteria or that microflora gets damaged are things like antibiotics or, you know, when we're delivering a baby, a lot of times we are administered antibiotics for precautionary measures. And I understand why, but it's important for us to think about what's happening to the postpartum mother's gut after pregnancy and after delivery and how we need to rebuild her gut um, if she's been administered antibiotics from delivery. So also non-antibiotic drugs, so if you are in postpartum and you are taking things like PPIs for reflux, those have an impact on your gut health. Um, if you were delivered via C-section or if your baby was delivered via C-section, there is alterations that happen to the gut microbiome. And uh, there's work that's to be done on that gut microbiome to make it as healthy and supportive as possible. If you're not eating the right foods, or if you're um, if you're not eating enough of certain nutrients that support the gut, you will have altered micro microflora. Stress. I mean, right now with this virus happening, we're all under a lot more stress and anxiety, and that really does impact the gut microflora as well. And if you've had any GI infections or chronic infections. So there's a lot of different things that it can affect the gut. It's not just about the food that you eat, which I think is why it's so important for us to talk about it because you may be thinking I'm doing everything right for my gut, but it's not actually giving you um, the results that we talked about what a healthy gut looks like. So what can you do to start addressing gut health? Okay, um, the first thing you can do is to start consuming more probiotic rich foods. So you've probably heard of probiotics. Oftentimes they come in a pill or a powder, maybe even a liquid for babies. Um, but I'm talking about probiotic rich foods. These are foods that were fermented in a way that live microorganisms live in the food. So yogurts, many yogurts, not all, but many yogurts, ideally unsweetened and um, with as few of additives, few additives as you can find. So as um, ingredients that are very clean that you can actually read and understand. And um, they should write, include in the ingredients or write on the package how many live organisms they aim to have in, in their products. So you can, of course, sweeten the yogurt yourself with honey or maple syrup or at home or berries, but ideally you're getting unsweetened because an excessive amount of sugar can actually impact the gut microflora as well. So sauerkraut, I told this to a mom the other day and she kind of turned up her nose, which I totally understand. Sauerkraut is not for everybody, but there's a lot of different brands out there now that are making... Um, fermented vegetables that aren't just cabbage. 
and they don't just have one flavor. So in the New England area, my favorites are uh, Real Pickles brand. They make a ginger carrots that me and my kids go nuts for. They are probiotic rich um, ginger, like essentially grated carrots. And um, they also have other brands. They have beets and they have your traditional sauerkraut. There's also uh, Silly Dilly Carrots by, I think, Mama's might be the brand but so these are you have to you can also get pickles for example but pip, pickles without vinegar because vinegar as we know kills bacteria so fermented foods um kombucha is a good one but it can have some high sugar so just watch out for that but it also has natural probiotics in it so getting a dose of this every day in your diet will continue to help support your gut microflora so i would say one to two tablespoons a day sometimes i like to do it where i serve the meal and we have we always have these um these fermented foods on the table and everybody has one or two tablespoons um you know and that varies for the children some of them eat a little some days they eat a ton but it all kind of works out so the next thing that you can be doing to support your gut microflora and ultimately support your immune system is to eat fiber rich foods i know that we talk about eating lots of fiber but we are not getting enough. 30 grams a day is what the recommended dosage of fiber is. That includes insoluble and soluble fiber. And most of the time when you think about fiber, you're thinking about uh, whole grains maybe, um, maybe even beans. Yes, those are rich in fiber, but there's also fruits and vegetables that are rich in fiber like leafy greens, apples, raspberries, Brussels sprouts. These uh, cruciferous types vegetables like that are also rich in fiber. So the reason why we need to have fiber is because um, the, the bacteria in our, di in our intestines, they digest the fiber and we don't. And they produce something called short chain fatty acids as a byproduct of um, digesting the fiber. And these short chain fatty acids are essentially energy and food for our intestinal cells. So by eating fiber, we're not just doing something related to stool, which we often think about, right? We think about enough fiber will help move the stool, enough fiber will help bulk up the stool, but really we're actually trying to feed those, those colon cells to stay really healthy so our immune system will be strong. Um, let's see. And also the last thing to think about is eating prebiotic rich foods. So these are foods like garlic and onions. Um, also something like asparagus or green bananas. These are like a kind of a random, uh, grouping of foods, if you will, but they're all car They're all classified as prebiotics, which helps, um, helps with motility among other things. But if we wanted to be kind of really specific for today's chat. Okay, so let's talk a bit about um, micronutrients that are critical for the immune system. So, you know, when we think about in pregnancy and we think about the diet that we're, um, that we're eating and we kind of think about how much food we need to eat or what we need to eat, oftentimes we think pregnancy is the most important time to be getting just enough nutrients. And that is 100% accurate that pregnancy is a critical time to be sure that you are giving your body an optimal diet so um, if you're unsure you should again talk to somebody like myself or another functional practitioner to help do an assessment for you and help you ensure that you're getting the right nutrients um, but also people don't realize in postpartum women often need more nutrients to really rebuild their blood stores and to support the healing of their muscles and tissues. So if you are newly postpartum, one particular vitamin that you need a lot of is vitamin C. And vitamin C, we'll talk about in a minute, is critical for your immune system. Um, but uh, if you're not getting enough to support your blood stores and the healing of your muscles and tissues, then you may not be getting enough for your immune strength. We're gonna keep talking about that in a minute. I'm just gonna to try to figure out Oh, what probiotics, I'm just gonna read some of the questions here. What probiotics do you recommend, Melissa? Sorry for the delay on that. So I, um, 
I really don't like to just blanket recommend a probiotic because every person's gut is is different and every person may need different things. So if if somebody's gut is completely healthy and there is no concern, they don't have skin issues, they don't have um, any hormonal issues, there aren't any um, you know issues like a Lyme disease or such, then if somebody is in tip-top shape, then I would recommend you getting a broad spectrum probiotic that has lactobacillus in it and bifidobacterium, and they should have a number of different strains. And I recommend separately um, taking a spore-based uh, probiotic, kind of a combination. They usually don't come in the same combination. Sometimes they do. And the name, the, the, I think it's the, the family name of the bacteria is Bacillus, B-A-C-I-L-L-U-S. So there would probably be two different products, but um, ideally you're working with somebody to understand what's happening in your body and if there is a specific strain of probiotic or strains of probiotic that your body needs. Okay, so let's see, how do you take an individual approach to nutrition since, oh, I love that. Hopefully I just answered that, Melissa. Exactly. I do an assessment of um, an individual's diet and really of their symptom patterns, their health history, and uh, look at it from a holistic picture. I also like to include blood labs in there. Really look at it from a holistic picture of what's happening. And then if we need to, we do some gut testing. I try to keep my testing minimal because I know it's an ex added expense. But sometimes we just need to peek under and look at the gut and see what's happening. Is there dysfunction? Are there certain strains of bacteria that are much higher and, and then therefore making this individual more susceptible to health conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or hypothyroidism. There's a lot we can do by looking at the gut and understanding what's happening. Okay, so do you have any tips for pregnant women suffering from excessive nausea? I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, but um, I know what it is and I think I always screw up the pronunciation. But um, let's talk about that because when we get into things to include at home, we are gonna be talking about um, some ingredients that will help in that, specifically ginger and lemon, um, the vitamin C and lemon. Oftentimes, uh, just to answer that question, I find when working with pregnant mamas, there's a couple of nutrient deficiencies that are often highly associated with excessive nausea and vomiting. They would be vitamin C and usually the adrenals are, have been taxed, so that's like excessive stress that have taxed the adrenals, and so vitamin C deficiency, also a B6 deficiency, um, and sometimes just a lot of the B vitamins um, are deficient when a woman has experienced excessive nausea and vomiting. Um, and sometimes magnesium. So people don't realize the majority of Americans, like I don't know the latest stat that I read was maybe approximately 75% of Americans are deficient in magnesium and we're not getting enough, and it's, it's especially important in stress. And with kind of modern life and us moving and going and going so fast, uh, we do need more magnesium. So this is often associated with um, a deficiency of, the, of magnesium is often, often associated with women who have um, excessive nausea and vomiting, at least in my experience. Okay. So let's get back to micronutrients. We talked a little bit about the, the um, postpartum period and immediately postpartum where you need more vitamin C and a number of other things like collagen to rebuild your blood stores and support healing of your muscles and tissues. But if a woman is lactating, actually, the nutrient needs are even higher in lactation than they are in pregnancy. And so many people don't realize that. Yes, we have very little time when baby is first born and we are nursing to eat enough food, but we actually need to be more eating more nutrients and more variety in that moment than um, we were when we were growing the baby inside of us. So unfortunately, because of um, you know modern life where we're not really slowing down as much and we're not getting enough as much support in the postpartum period, Mothers aren't getting enough nutrients. Somebody is not cooking for us regularly, right? We're holding down the fort. We're doing it all. And hopefully, I'm sure we have supportive family. But some cases, 
family aren't close and the family is not close and we're not getting the support. So somebody is not cooking for us. So we're not getting enough zinc, vitamin C, vitamin E specifically from an immune system perspective among a host of other nutrients that we're likely deficient in. At least, at least the literature shows that we're not getting enough of these nutrients in postpartum. But not getting enough of certain micronutrients that are required for proper immune function and, and deficiencies of these nutrients really results in, in immunosuppression and dysregulation of the immune response. So let's talk about what those nutrients are, but I'm going to pop into the chat and see if we have any other questions here. Um, I love that. With us making less frequent visits to the grocery store, what critical things, sh what critical kind of ingredients should we have on hand that last? So let's get into that. We will make sure we visit that when we talk about the different nutrients. Okay, so the first nutrient we'll talk about is vitamin A. And vitamin A is called retinol when it's derived from animal foods. And beta carotene, it's when it's um, in its precursor cursor form in plant foods. So what you can be doing, vitamin A is really critical for the immune system. It's not often discussed, but, um, but it has many roles. I won't get into the details of the roles right now. But let's talk about what has vitamin A or beta carotene. So beta carotene, think about the carrot, carrot part of beta carotene and think about the color of carrots. So orange, orange foods are really rich in beta carotene. Carrots, pumpkin, sweet potatoes, cantaloupe, mango. Um, these are really rich in beta carotene and you can have um, a lot of these. Actually, what's great is things that last. As long as you're keeping them cool, carrots, sweet potatoes can last. Even pumpkin, right? Or acorn squash is another orange, um, orange uh, vegetable, excuse me. You can have frozen mango in the fridge. You could actually chop up cantaloupe and put that in the fridge as well. It doesn't probably taste as good as mango might when it thaws, but you can put it in a smoothie. Other, other foods that um, you can have are goji berries. They have uh, vitamin A in them actually, naturally. They also have vitamin C and goji berries come dried. They are very medicinal. They, are, they have a lot of medicinal properties according to Chinese medicine. So I would definitely not recommend you have more than a tablespoon of goji berries a day, but um, they're amazing for the immune system as well as hormonal balance. What else you can have? If you take a fish oil and you're not taking cod liver oil, cod liver oil is awesome. And definitely check on lab door for your fish oil to see how pure it is. But cod liver oil comes not just in liquid, but it comes in capsules and it naturally has vitamin D associated with it. And we'll talk about vitamin D in just a second. And these, these vitamins actually work synergistically to support the immune system. So aim for a couple of servings of these foods a day. Um, I think the easiest when you think about definitely postpartum is having, having sweet potatoes, roasted sweet potatoes, carrots um, in the fridge so you can always go to them during a snack would be amazing. So if you don't have an Instapot, that's one of my favorite kitchen tools. And it takes about 18 minutes to get beautifully delicious kind of smash worthy uh, sweet potatoes. Um, so I would have those on and I would definitely store some frozen fruit in the fridge. It's what's wonderful about this time is that it's becoming warmer and it's much easier to drink smoothies regularly and smoothies in pregnancy and postpartum, they are your friends. You can pack so much nutrients in there um, and especially with such little time. So vitamin D. That's the next micronutrient we're, we'll talk about. Vitamin D is critical, not just for your bones and your heart and your brain, but it's critical for your immune system. Some experts like the Vitamin D Council suggest that 75% or more of the US population could be deficient in vitamin D. We are in the Northern Hemisphere here and in the winter months, that's about six months out of the year, we can't actually synthesize vitamin D in our skin. So we need to be supplementing with it. And 
I know there are a lot of foods that are uh, fortified with vitamin D, which I don't love fortified foods um, because sometimes you can get too much of a fortified vitamin. But when it comes to vitamin D, you actually can't eat enough food with vitamin D in it. So you must supplement. Hopefully, this is a shift in conventional practice going forward, but I, I recommend that you get a vitamin D liquid if you can, particularly in pregnancy and postpartum because the gut is often in a state of dysfunction if you're not working with somebody to help you keep it on track. So liquid is much more easily absorbed and digested. Um, this one is pure encapsulations. Each drop is 1,000 IUs, and I would recommend, without knowing your vitamin D history, that you take at least 2,000 IUs a day. Um, and there's a very small percentage of the population that has very high vitamin D, so if you are in that, definitely do not take 2,000 IUs a day, but we should be taking around 2,000 IUs a day. And if you're nursing, you need to be taking, and you're not giving, excuse me, if you're not you're nursing and you're not giving your baby um, vitamin D supplement, you need to be taking, I think it's 6,250 I use a day. So for this particular product, it would be six drops. And then your baby is getting enough vitamin D through the breast milk to um, have adequate vitamin D. Okay, so next we will talk about zinc. Zinc is an immune boosting mineral. It's used by the immune system's first responders, think about it like that, that really go, the cells go after and destroy bacteria and viruses. And actually teenagers are, you know, when you see teenagers have acne, that is often a zinc issue. Maybe food allergies as well and food sensitivities and stress, but zinc is often an underlying deficiency that we find um, in people that have acne. So where can you find zinc? One of my favorite ways to eat zinc is in pumpkin seeds or the, the de-shelled version that Trader Joe sells a lot of, the pepitas. I love pumpkin seeds. I also love hemp seeds. These are both rich in um, zinc, among other minerals. And cashews have a lot of zinc, but also things like beef and lamb and oysters. And if you are vegetarian, I mentioned the seeds, but chickpeas, lentils, and mushrooms. And you'll be happy to know, ladies, that cocoa powder is rich in zinc. So don't deny yourself any cocoa powder during this period. A nice hot cup of cocoa could do us all some good. Um, so my favorite way, because we are a gluten-free, dairy-free family due to food sensitivities and chronic gut health my whole life, um, I like to take some of those new recipes, and I have some of my own, but recipes that use a lot of almond flour, and I like to use pumpkin seed flour instead. So you can replace it one-to-one -one with almond flour or any other nut flour that is called, is in a, re in a recipe and use ground up pumpkin seeds. The easiest way, if you don't have a way to grind up pumpkin seeds, but you might have a coffee grinder, is to throw the seeds in the coffee grinder and they, it comes out into beautiful flour. So just swap it one to one. And one thing to keep in mind, when you use pumpkin seeds and it, the, the baked goods kind of get exposed to the oxygen, they slightly turn a little bit of green, but it doesn't mean they're moldy. It just means um, that they've been oxidized a teeny bit, but um, still nutrient rich. So let's see, the last thing we'll talk about is vitamin C rich foods um, that you can start to incorporate more of. You're likely talking about this. You might be thinking about citrus fruit, fruit but strawberries and you can get them frozen and you can keep them in your freezer if you can't get it fresh right now because it's not quite berry season um, but bell peppers and broccoli also i like to buy a stock up on bell peppers slice them up and store them in the freezer and because i'm usually yes i definitely eat raw bell peppers but i'm usually kind of sauteing them lightly or cooking them um, with other ingredients so i like to keep them in the freezer also pomegranates pomegranate seeds if you really like those those are high in vitamin c as well so in a pinch though i like to keep 
um, this vitamin C powder on hand. It does not have any icky additives. It has citric acid, a little bit, not totally loving citric acid, but it's okay. It's a preservative um, that is uh, more natural. It has natural orange flavor, beta carotene, just for a little color, some stevia and natural mango flavor. But the vitamin C that is in here that's kind of creating this product are from goji berries. We talked about goji berries. Um, amla, fruit, amla fruit, cranberries, and acerola. So you can be eating your goji berries and getting your vitamin C too. Okay, another, I did mention zinc. I like zinc carnosine because um, it is more gentle on the digestive system, the stomach, and also it actually, there are some studies that demonstrate it really nurtures the gut lining. So zinc carnosine is what I prefer. If you don't like powdered, you know why I like the vitamin C powder is because sometimes I'm sick of drinking water all day and it makes my water taste yummy. So I also have vitamin C tablets that uh, I take once a day. That powder I give to the kiddos, so um, they love it. They get their vitamin C every day. We eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but vitamin C is really shown to be working better if you are taking it um, regularly as an additive, as a, as a supplement form. So definitely think about postpartum period. Vitamin C is critical for rebuilding your muscles and tissues, but also for your immune system. All right, so last but not least, let's talk about some things I like to have around the house that support immune strength, especially when you kind of feel like something's coming on. So ginger is one of them. You'll see I peeled half of this ginger. This is fresh ginger. What I recommend you do is peel the whole thing and store it in the freezer. And then, but you need to have a zester or a, like a grater, and then you can just grate it directly into your food or into your tea. Um, so ginger is good for the motility of the gut. There's a lot of research that demonstrate ginger is good for that. It's also incredibly amazing for people, for pregnant mamas with excessive nausea and vomiting. The issue is that people will drink a ginger tea that's kind of pre-packaged and say, I've tried ginger, it doesn't work. But the dosing to get effective response against excessive nausea and vomiting in pregnancy is much higher than you can get in a little packet of ginger tea. So please work with somebody like myself, a functional nutritionist or functional doctor or an herbalist. They will know what the potency level and what the dosing needs to be for you to get effective results from taking ginger to support excessive nausea and vomiting, okay? Um, it's a potent antiviral substance. You can, I think Dr. Aviva Ram, I loved it. She just posted um, a video the other day on making ginger juice and having that and kind of doing a shot of ginger juice for keeping your motility moving and keeping your immune system supported. So that's another uh, great idea. One thing I like to do, and I got this idea from Aviva Ram, but I've kind of made some modifications to it over the years, is I often keep a uh, mason jar in the fridge for a week or so, maybe a little bit less. And I put, I steep garlic, so I will take some fresh garlic, I'll, I'll crush it up, and, um, and I will peel probably about a tape, like, like a thumb size nub of the ginger. I will grate it into the, into the hot water with the garlic. I'll squeeze in some lemon, probably about a half a lemon, and I'll use some unfiltered honey, okay? And I will let that steep. Sometimes I put in raspberry leaf tea, um, depends on what I'm feeling. Sometimes I'll put in some mint leaves or sometimes some thyme leaves. Thyme is incredibly amazing for, um, it's a natural medicine for throat issues and respiratory issues. So I like to have thyme that I can steep with this. And then if you notice, I just kind of get one of these little tea, um, strainers and I will strain as much as I can I'll pour it out into my cup and I will strain it so that I'm not getting chunks of the ingredients though I love to have to have the um the ginger chunks but I don't exactly love to chomp on garlic chunks 
sometimes if they're cooked, but not necessarily if they're raw and have been steeping in my hot water. So that's awesome to have. Another thing you can have, and you know what I started doing um, is I, is shiitake mushrooms. So mushrooms themselves there is a there are a number of different mushrooms that have been studied for their medicinal properties they're amazing immune modulators things like cordyceps and uh, turkey tail and you can buy mushrooms um, high quality mushroom powder i would make sure that you do not get anything that's been go grown in grain but really get true mushrooms real mushrooms is a brand i think um four enigma might be another brand and get real mushrooms um, and you can create you know a bone broth and add some mushroom powder to it you could add it to your tea um, every day for an immune strength but if you don't want to go and make a big purchase on mushroom powder get some shiitake mushrooms they have also been studied chop them up keep them in the freezer and use those regularly in your meals so um, that's another great one I know people have been talking about um, about adding mushrooms. Oh, Four Signomat, excuse me, is the mushroom brand. I actually am going to order from some of them. I had some. They have this amazing, I think, cocoa mushroom tea that uh, was delicious. So I highly recommend that. Okay. So, you know, that's where I think I'm going to stop. I think we answered all the questions. Let me see if I can stroll scroll down yes I think we answered all the questions but you can find me at healthymamas.com that's healthy m a m a s dot com and you know many of the things I talked about I actually wrote a book that was published in 2019 by Chronicle Books called 52 small changes for the family how ridiculous that I don't have it in front of me but maybe we'll send a picture on later um, and I talk about a lot of these different ingredients talk about different foods, different nutrients, but I also talk about a number of other things that you can be considering on keeping your family healthy and happy. And, you know, I'd love to support you if you have any questions, both from a pregnancy perspective or postpartum or pediatric perspective uh, about the immune strength, about diet and lifestyle to have you feeling your best. So thank you all so much. I think we got, thank you so much, Melissa, for having me. And I, I hope to connect with you again in the future. Bye-bye.